Uh, hello friends in the back to basic series again we learn few things about the stop and chop technique in this video uh, this is an elderly patient with a dense hard nuclear cataract and i'll be trying to demonstrate the stop and chop technique which is basically a combination of both the sculpting and the chopping techniques now first we create a trench to divide the nucleus into two halves and then subsequently chop these two halves into multiple small fragments well we can say that it's an intermediate technique to learn in between the four quadrant technique and the direct chop technique and mastering this technique will act like a stepping stone before we graduate to the direct chop technique so the temporal incision is being created and uh, now i begin my rexus again we need to be Uh, aware that a larger rexus is going to be helpful when we are dealing with such uh, large uh, bulky cataracts so i'm aiming to have a slightly bigger rexus and i have an adequately sized rexus and hydrodissection is being gently performed with very little amount of fluid and uh, the lens is tapped on the other end so that the fluid is let out and the nucleus motility is confirmed before beginning to sculpt i aspirate the overlying epinucleus to lay bare the underlying hard nucleus now i begin my trenching the nucleus is stabilized by my chopper as i begin to sculpt the foot pedal is pushed all the way down so that the tip slowly moves across the thickest part of the nucleus and slowly the foot pedal will be eased off gently as the stroke is completed the foot pedal will be only in the irrigation mode when the phaco tip comes back to start another stroke uh, it's important to realize that uh, i am trying to widen the superficial part of the groove so that there is no obstruction for the free movement of the tip and sleeve as i go progressively deeper for sculpting so this is an important uh, tip to understand Uh, we cannot go deep unless and until we have a, a wider uh, mouth to enter deep a wide enough trench is necessary so that the tip and the sleeve can move freely to create a deep trench the nucleus is rotated and the trench is lengthened and deepened further once i've reached around 80 to 90% depth and now is the time to separate the two fragments i'm not in a hurry to separate the fragments at a single go gently i'm laterally separating them by Uh, in stages by progressively keeping the two instruments at a deeper planes so finally we have got two large heminucleus which are completely separated from each other so the sculpting part is over now we need to stop and start the chopping procedure our aim is to divide these heminucleus into smaller fragments by chopping the tip is buried sufficiently deep into the material of the nucleus to create a vacuum seal then the sharp chopper is placed in front to perform a vertical chop and then lateral separation a similar chop and separation is performed with the next piece and in the first heminucleus we have got these three smaller fragments now i'm emulsifying each of these fragments in a controlled manner ensuring that we don't have uh, any turbulence and minimal lens chatter and at a deeper plane i'm emulsifying this probably at the capsule rexus level these are the tricks which will ensure least amount of trauma to the corneal endothelium Now is the time to replenish some OVD. First is the dispersive OVD with chondroitin sulfate very much near the cornea followed by HPMC below it into the bag. The second heminucleus is being chopped now and since the bag is relatively empty the heminucleus is going to be slightly mobile and hence chopping could be tricky. But well, the trick here is to again get a very good hold of the nucleus by burying the tip sufficiently deep 
into the substance of the nucleus before chopping. So the second heminucleus is divided into three smaller fragments and each of these small fragments needs to be emulsified. We can see that the fragments are very slowly emulsified and being aspirated in a very controlled manner. As I always keep telling that even with these hard cataracts we can get clear corneas in the first post-op day. As long as we can control the turbulence in the lens chatter during emulsification of these fragments. I think the mantra here is to go slow and at every stage of surgery we should feel that we are in control of the situation. The fragment is seen dancing around the tip sticking onto it until it gets progressively smaller in size before vanishing off completely. So if the fragments behave like this in a controlled manner and if they don't go haywire flying around everywhere in the antechamber, the mechanical trauma to the endothelium is minimized significantly and in spite of having used considerable amount of phaco energy, we still will have clearer corneas on the first post-op day. If you can see the fragments like this which are always sticking onto the tip and dancing around it, it indicates that this combination of the energy flow rate in the vacuum is perfect. Seeing these fragments behave in such a way is indeed a pretty sight. So finally the heart cataract is efficiently emulsified. The little bit of the cortex which is there is aspirated and a multi-piece intraocular lens is being placed into the bag. So to summarize, the stop and chop technique is a very graceful technique which is an intermediate level technique if mastered can be a stepping stone to learn and graduate to the direct chop technique. Thank you for attention and hope this helps.